saying that nigga did it how I always wanted to do it, and I'll never be able to do it like that. The one thing that I hate about TikTok is if you like one thing on TikTok, that'll be your for you page for the whole fucking day. That'll be your for you page for the whole fucking day. Paul Pierce was on the uh, Mace and Cameron podcast. I liked one video and got nothing but Paul Pierce content. And he says the most outlandish shit in the history of history. Dr. Sandy's better than D-Wade. Did that one? I saw that one. Did you hear did you hear when this motherfucker was talking about how he gave uh the Cavs 41 and beat them in a game seven? Which he did, but Braun had 45. Like he's like, he's like, is it because because they asked him the question, hey man, do you think you're better than Braun? I think of my best day are better than Braun. I gave him 41 in the playoffs. He had 45. Can you? Nope. Nope. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not dealing with that. I'm not dealing. With, I can't. I can't deal. With, I can't. Remember, remember, remember that time he uh, got shits because he ate black clam chowder and they took him off on the wheelchair. And he talking about. He talking about. He, he came talk, back after he, after he took the dump. <laughs> he talking about. He talking about. Yeah, bro. I hurt, I hurt my leg. No, no, you didn't. You had poop. You farted that too much. Is, that is the personification of being a different animal but the same beast. You're welcome. Nice. Nice. I want a martini. How many dollars you want? 81. <laughs> yeah, I know what time it is. I am Joe Freeline, aka I am the one tweeting, aka I am the toxic one, aka I wish Rhea Ripley looked at me the way she looked at Dom. I just there's there's no other rhyme reason for that. That's just a fine ass God woman. That woman is fine, fine. There's no way around it. Welcome to the High Tech Wrestling Podcast. Tag Rhea Ripley in this face, like now. I tag her right now. Yes, mommy. Tag tag Rhea Ripley. Tag Rhea. Did y'all see what she said on Twitter? We'll talk about that later. Talk about that later. Talk about that later. I got my brothers here. We're we gonna talk a lot of good wrestling stuff. It's some stuff to go over. <coughs> And then we're going to get all this stuff going. Let's get this started the right way. I want to introduce my brother, Red-Headed Wrangler, the intuitive poppy, the man that will listen to your feelings, okay, and your emotions, communicate with you properly. But he's not going to take your silly ass shit. Twelve Poppy, aka Hot Take KG. Tell them what's up, baby. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm drinking Sleepy Time Tea right now. I'm trying to be in my best behavior. Uh, I cannot promise anything after this introduction, though. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. I would rather you not be on your best behavior because right now uh, we're going to have a really good episode. We got a lot of shit to talk about. Next, I want to bring up uh, the. Uh, Hash hentai. I don't even know if that's can I say that? No, I'm not saying. Uh the king of Kush, if you will, ladies and gentlemen. The clutch of them all. Uh the clutchiest one of them all. Don't even say that. I got you, big guy. I don't know what to say. Boo! Great picture, by the way. It will tell him what's up. Man, it was on fire. Y'all saw that? Okay. You know, good evening. Welcome. As always, I'm here to deliver some clutch vibes. I got a lot on my mind. I want to get off about what's been going on. Um, yeah, I like how uh, KG and my, my boy got the matching polos on. We'll get to that too. <laughs> <laughs> y'all, y'all like y'all singing the private school choir. Calm down. I'm sorry. I'm Look like the Mean Street Posse. <laughs> Hey, we did once upon a time call ourselves uh, KO and, and Jericho, you know. So I remember that. I remember that. So who had the list? Oh, KG had the list. The list. Makes sense. KG list was crazy too. His list was long. <laughs> <laughs> it was expensive. 
<laughs> it was extensive. We we had we had we had a homeboy, and every day he would do something stupid. He'd be like, "Just make this again." <laughs> you know what happened? You know, you know, you know, you know that's. Go ahead, Will. No, I'm just saying I I could just see you doing it. Like I could see you oh. having a reason to do that shit to people. Bro, you yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. And then there was the one time that uh. They kept coming to me and Logan Head because we had on jeans that day, and one of our call center reps was wearing leggings, but we kept getting yelled at. Then, then my West Side came out. <laughs> hey, I made the list one time. We were in Columbus, Ohio, but we won't talk about that. Um, we did that, but yeah. But that's, how, that's, like hot, that's like hot take after dark. Yeah, I, I feel like that's. I feel like we can't do that. We. Hey, that that KG. Was- oh my god. I don't. I, I have not seen him that toxic since. Hey, that KG was so toxic. This kid, this, this, this KG, that KG was like, "Hey man, what are you doing?" Was- we went all the way to Nashville, and that KG didn't come out. <laughs> oh shit! That KG, was out, boy. that KG was out in Ohio. We got it, bro. That KG, that KG was on another. Look, listen. Listen before before we get before we get to the next guest. As y'all can tell, we kind of we like we we close we close to shit. So we ended up a lot of shit together. There's levels to this shit. That's all I'm gonna say. There's levels to this shit. Next, I want to introduce the funnel, the funnel cake team team that Savage Beast apparently for like one hour. <laughs> oh shit! Okay, can you go get a funnel cake? I don't want no damn funnel cake. <laughs> I, I wanted the I wanted the funnel cake. <laughs> hey, he definitely smashed the funnel cake. He smashed the funnel he cake. On the he went over there and he like, hold on, it's actually kind of good. I want to say I want to say something real quick. I really appreciate y'all boys, man, because that shit that 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 shit was something that was like epic, but it didn't turn out the way of epic proportions for everybody. So they I feel- said they said I hit a. With the be blessed, she went in and hugged everybody. They told her, I said, Be blessed, love. Hmm. <laughs> they, said, took, they said, I took a hand for you. Okay, I'm gonna let you end the slogan. I'm sorry. Next, next up, next up is the, <laughs> is the man that dates women 311, seven foot one, uh, who only dates women that drinks out of a wine glass and has matching manicure and pedicure. And expects you to be able to hold your end of the bargain because he owns shit. So get your shit together. Don't even say nothing, big guy. I got you. People, old man Logan. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Dave Hollister. This is Baxter. What? <laughs> what did you say? What the fuck did you get? Did you just call yourself Dave Hollister? I'm Dave Hollister, and this is Black Street. I hate you. <laughs> All right, it's another episode of the Hot Take Wrestling Podcast. Thank y'all for tuning in. As always, make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Tell a friend to tell a friend. We have some very hot takes some some very interesting takes and we are one of the longest running podcasts that i know of uh in our following that we've been following since this has been in existence so we the ones we're more consistent than john mock bleeding in a match there you go that part wow bro like that that that's actually very accurate like that's not even like that's not even a flex. That's like, that's just real shit. Like that's just accurate. Ones we can depend on. Friends. Sorry. Um. Sorry. All right. Let's get right to it, bro. Let's get right to it. I ain't gonna waste some time. I ain't gonna waste some time. All right. So these these are some things that we've had in our mind and just like kind of been thinking about throughout the week. All right. Um. Judgment Day. On fire right now. On fire. White hot right now, on fire. Blue flame, okay. Blue flame avatar fire right now, okay. There's no way around. Super Saiyan blue right now, okay. 
Um, they're currently being used in two shows. And, and then the way all three. Oh, no, they're on all three. Dom defended the title on SmackDown uh, on Friday. My bad. They're on all three. They're on all three. With them being on all three shows, if the bloodline was assembled the same way, who would have been the female leader of the bloodline? Because honestly, right now, Rhea Ripley is the leader of the bloodline as a woman. She's the leader. She got them to get their shit together. She got... Number one, she helped Dom get the title. That title was because of Rhea, because she didn't slap the shit out of Wesley. And she actually, like, stuck him, too, because nigga was bleeding after the match. So, yeah. excuse my language. Uh, he was bleeding after the match. So, if the bloodline was assembled similar with the same characters, who is the female leader of the bloodline? Anybody? Uh, there's not enough to me. There's no woman that had enough personality to, that Rhea has to say the leader. They could have had a woman in there, she wouldn't have been the, the borderline leader. I got an answer to this. What you got? Go ahead, get your answer, bro. So, let, 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 let's break this down, guys. It's only off the top of our head maybe three women who could have probably even been put in that female position. Anyway, we got. Naomi, mm -hmm. of course, that's more so because she was married into the bloodline. They could have used that if she would have, of course, you know, if they've been with the company. Um, second person, same on this, if they were still with the company, Nia Jax. That might not be a popular answer, but she is Samoan. If she did have momentum, she's a former champ. And being in that position could have probably did something for her career, if we're being honest. But I think the person that makes the most sense. This is a, it's a hot take for y'all ass. Is the one with the least amount of personality. It's a mean. One. I gotta stop. I, I gotta stop. I gotta stop you at the least amount of personality because when the Usos first got here, she was carrying. Yeah. 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 That was the reason why that was probably my number one answer. Like, I remember what she was when she debuted with them. Hell. I think when, um, in my personal opinion, when her and Natalya had that little um, tag team title run around WrestleMania a few years ago, I was more, I think I was drawn more to Tamina than Natalya in that in that particular story they were using because Tamina ain't really did nothing accomplishment-wise up until that point because of, you know, just how shit been going. Now, she yeah. had the best career wrestling-wise in the ring? No. But is she, like, terrible compared to other people who have opportunities? Hell no. Putting her in that position? Could have could probably save her career even at her age. She could probably just be like a mouthpiece or just the female enforcer for the bloodline if they would have let that happen. But we know what happened. What about what about? So I have a I have an answer, but I just don't think about being a leader with Roman being in there. That's my thing. Nobody Roman's not gonna follow anybody. Yeah, yeah, that's, 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 yeah. That's what I would go. I was gonna throw somebody out there, and because of the fact that it's all suspended belief, you know. Even though the rest of them are related, could have thrown Dakota Kai in there. She does have some more heritage. You, bro, you just said what I was thinking. That's crazy. I thought about that, but she doesn't necessarily have any like some more ties to anybody in the group. Anymore. No, she doesn't. What I'm saying is because like you could just you, could, you know how they fabricate them all the time. Yokozuna was Japanese. That's him. <laughs> 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 they could have fabricated it like, hey, she's our cousin, or you know, she. I don't know what she got random cousin. We just kept under the wraps. Yeah, I get yeah, it. Yeah, something like that. I mean, for for example, Ed and Christian were brothers at one point. People forget that. Yeah, who? Ed and Christian. Oh yeah, they were. And it's all of a sudden slowly their best friends. Right. right. And they, they also never acknowledge that Bray Wyatt and uh, Bo Dallas were brothers at any point. So. I don't think they ever did on TV. No, I got, a, I got a hot take for you. Go. I'm going outside of the world of the WWE. I'm going outside of the world of the Samoan dynasty for this woman representative because it needs to be a woman that's capable of being dominant, a woman that can go toe to toe with the Rhea, with the Charlotte, with the Bianca. Okay, with the Nia Jax when she was there, with the Ronda Rousey, with the Shayna. You know what I'm saying? Uh, with the Bailey. Tessa Blanchard. Tessa Blanchard? Yes. 
Mm. She fits. She fits the powerful mold. I give it that. That's what I'm saying. You necessarily because if we spitball and I give it to you. If we spitball and we talk about somebody that's not even necessarily part of the actual bloodline, you could have put Raquel in there. Oh, Raquel, Raquel was a thought, but I want. I, I was thinking of somebody outside of the world that you can introduce to the world of WWE while making sure you're giving the the group guaranteed heat. And you're bringing somebody that's a bona fide ring general for the women that could come and have instant classics with the names nah. I just nah for sure. Real quick, I know, the, I know the real answer. Real quick, real quick before you before y'all go again. Because I thought about the obvious. I thought about Trinity. I thought about Tamina. I thought about Nia. And that, those would have been the obvious. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I wanted to say somebody outside the box. I like Sami Zayn. Sami Zayn had zero blood relation to anybody in the bloodline. Yeah. Nobody thought that was going to. Y'all tell me when they very first started doing the whole Sami Zayn thing with the bloodline, we thought that was going to be a real thing. We thought no, we knew it wasn't going to work. We knew it wasn't going to be over sooner. Right. You know what I'm but, saying? But, but it worked out for like more than like three, four months. It was amazing. Yeah. It, was, it ended up being, for me personally, probably the best thing that could have happened to the bloodline. It, because it made it last that much longer. Yeah. You know what I mean? And Sammy contributed so heavily to that entire story. Like years, years down the line, let's say 10 years down the line, when we get in the Bloodland documentary, Sammy's gonna be all over that. He has to be. Yeah. Real quick, Tessa Blanchard wrestled loose this weekend in an outdoor event, which basically means Tessa Blanchard is back in the ring. Which basically means that Tessa Blanchard is going to be shopping. She's going to be shopped. Whether that's AEW, WWE, or anywhere else she goes. It might be something. Give it a year. Maybe less. Jordan so, Grace is a free agent too, FYI. Yep. No, she, she's not going to WWE. She's going to AEW. Yep. I don't know. Her husband, her husband, her husband works for Ring of Honor. Her husband, her husband has ties Ring of Honor. She's more familiar with wrestlers there because of she's got, she's going to go to Ring of Honor because of the way that they did um, Johnny Nitro's wife. Oh yeah. Well, to that I say Trips, and I, I know we say this a lot. Trips wasn't in control at that time. All right, I get it. He wasn't. Right. Right now she could go there, and while we can see where Vince has his say in certain storyline certain things that take place certain matches or whatever we know vince isn't you know one of the main chefs anymore i think jordan grace coming to wwe now would i put her on nxt no i'd probably make her do a aj styles put her right on raw smackdown Mm -mm. put her nxt put her unless they were going to do black and gold nxt which i'm sure we'll get to to later on in, in the episode but that would be the only reason why i would put it down there other than that, let her go to AJ Styles' route. She's one of the most popular women outside of the WWE and AEW bubble of uh, American wrestling that could come in here that has a built-in follower. All I'm right. just saying. I, okay, this 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 is this is my thoughts on that. Number one, I had the Dakota Kai thing written down because she was such a good ass heel when she was with Raquel Gonzalez, which I thought was going to be amazing. Number two, if you Sign Jordan Grace. You have to understand now that Jordan Grace is coming. Because Jordan Grace is probably one of the most underrated female wrestlers to really be like really wrestling this. Like, remember, they had Deanna Peraza, who was who's who's a, a impact champion. Um, they had I can't think of his goddamn wife's name, but she deserves recognition because she was amazing too. Chelsea Green has already shown you that she she wants it. And shout out to Chelsea Green for keep going because she deserved better. She finally got it, tag team champ. But if Jordan Grace, main roster or NXT, gets there, she's coming. You're not going to stop. She's going to be champion. You're not going to stop. No one's going to out-wrestle her. No one's going to outdo her. Her promos are nice. She's coming. End all, be all. Okay. Another hot take. Now, this is something that Logan said that I don't agree with. There's a couple things he said I don't agree with. Okay. All right. 
He said Rhea Ripley is at the top of the food chain of women's wrestling. True. I agree. He also said that they should make her the undisputed champion. Which basically means she carries two. Like she gets she does the Roman thing. Just does unify the championships all at once. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. What y'all say, son? I'll co-sign it because the women's division is too small in comparison to the men's division. So there's only a handful of feuds left for Rhea that she hasn't had. She only got two people on Raw. Well, she got one person on Raw because Bianca on SmackDown. The only person she got left on Raw that's worth feuding with is Becky. And she just got, and Rhea just had the title only for a few months. And she's already like, she's, she's phenomenal. There's nothing wrong with Rhea's character or anything, but... Who jumps out at you at Raw on Raw except for Becky that you really want to see our feud with? That's it. Cause maybe it's because they're not building people correctly. I don't know, but I really want to see her wrestle. Um, I'm trying to do the rest of the roster though. I, I really want to see her wrestle Trish Stratus bodyguard. I really want to see so we start. Oh, that'd be great. Oh, I was that's a great match. She I gotta get built at that point though. She got to get built to that point. Yeah, Zoe not there yet, but I also want to point out Zoe Stark beat Becky Lynch on Raw. She got a W over her. And no, no matter where she is in her career, she can say she beat Becky Lynch already. With Trish Stratus in her corner, they can actually build to it. That's a hell of a way to make a star. It's a list. It's small, but big. Whatever. You can remember it and build on it. And you got to understand, too, that like now NXT, like NXT women's brand now, they're coming out, too. Because now they're 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 listen, the match with Rhea Ripley versus that woman's name I can't fucking remember. I'm 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 scatterbrained today. That match was epic. She ready. She she's the one from last night. Yep, she's main roster right um, now. Um, I know who you're talking about. Uh, Davenport. Davenport. She's ready. Yeah, she's ready. And and it's some and it's some people and some people in the background that's coming back too. That are ready too. You know what I'm saying? They're they're ready. It's a bunch of people that are ready. The thing about it is, is now you know WWE is not in the business of you know they're not like AEW where they make great matches. They're in the business of making stars. And I have a good storyline for it. So for me, what I learned about Rhea Ripley is is that Rhea Ripley has transcended the mark of where we talk about her as a woman's wrestler now. She just fucking great. That was Lyra, Lyra Valkyrie. Lyra uh, Valkyrie, yeah. Lyra yeah. Valkyrie. Also, hey, she's from um, NXT UK. She had she pretty decent. Yeah, so she's she's. There's another one down there in NXT though. That's Blair Davenport. Yeah. Yep. She's now now the thing about Rhea is is that she transcends definition as a woman. She's not a woman's wrestler. It's not who she is. She's the leader of a group. She's a champion. She is a catalyst for a lot of things. Dom winning the North American Championship. Bringing together Damian Priest and Finn Balor to be able to maintain the group that she's actually in. So far, they've said that she's injured Raquel Gonzalez and now... Fuck, I am so lost today, bro. I'm so sorry. Liv? Liv Morgan. Jesus. So those are legit injuries. And I have... And I, and I, and I, and I, just, listen, I just got 2K23... Again, and did like the whole my rise and shit, and I just wrestled and tag with her, so I should know the shit. But it's okay. But like the reason why I don't want her to unify those championships is because now is not the time for that. It's not the time for that, right? It would be time for it if there was nothing else. But she's connected in so many other things that the women's division is not really a thing right now like dom being champion matters because re is a part of that whoever wins against seth with seth and finn re is going to be a part of that when damien cash is in i guarantee you re is going to be a part of that that unification championship is way down the line no and I'll, I'll tell you why no you tell me does Rhea even have a match for SummerSlam yet? Not announced yet. Not announced, but there will be one. Until her, um, Raquel. 
It's aiming towards that, right? Yeah, which is going to be fucking fire. Now, lie to me and tell me you're as invested in Oscar as champion right now, who has both Charlotte and Bianca in her SummerSlam match. It's a triple threat match for the women's championship on SmackDown. Lie to me and tell me you're invested in that. We had to build to that, though, bro. They're building to it. and what, who I'm not going to lie to you. But I'll say I am. Who do you hear talking about it? Who do the visibility aspect of it, right? Mm-hmm. Rhea's been on all three shows. She just had a, sh- a match on um, NXT the other night. Rhea, like you said, in- in- instrumental in Dom winning. You know what I mean? Instrumental in keeping the group together. All right. Rhea is the top of the food chain, bro. In terms of WWE, she's looking amazing. She's reinventing herself. She's not the super golf, uh, 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 you know what I'm saying, Rhea, she was before. This is a sexy version of that. Everybody is lusting. I saw something on Instagram the other day. Some dudes you would have never thought watching wrestling talking about Rhea Ripley. Mm. Yo, I don't watch wrestling like that, but that motherfucker Rhea Ripley joke. Excuse me, you have to, you know. They're cursing, but this is literally how the video went. Ripley's believe it or not. Rhea is money right now, bro. You put Rhea in that trip, you make that a fate of four way, and you let her control that 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 uh division while she can. And Rhea, the Oscar Rhea match, you'll be more invested in than Oscar versus anybody right now. I'm sorry, I'm not trying to take a dump on Oscar. I I, I really wish they hadn't got her into the position where she's in now where they don't care i just hope they don't do the the the, the obvious the, the the cliche thing they'll do and have eo cash in on her at summer slam no, I, that 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 I want my I want, I want my brother to finish but you, and and i'm leading up to something with that because i feel like summer slam is gonna have some huge ramifications in terms of judgment day i do think finn is going to beat seth and i do think damian priest is going to cash in on a newly crowned jay uso no and he's going to do that because why because paul Heyman is going to become the advocate for judgment day i think damian priest don't cash in on I think Damian Priest on cash in on Carmelo Hayes. I forgot about that shit, Logan. It's time for Paul to turn on Roman. He always does it when he least expects it. I forgot about it. When he turned on Brock for Big Show. Did anybody see that coming? I forgot about that. When he. Uh, I don't know. Paul don't fit them though. I don't think they even need. As much as I love Paul Heyman, that stable. Eh. It's not about him needing him. It's no, I know, but I mean, like he always kind of fit his his his, him his needing people him. he represented. Hear me he, out. Hmm. Paul Heyman needs to be with the winners. He needs to be the person that's holding hmm. all the titles. He needs to be the person that can brag about my faction running the company. That's over in terms of the bloodline running the company. We don't have a dominant tag team anymore over here. You know my, what? My, I got an idea. I'll let you finish. Chief, my tribal chief is calling himself the only one now. So what does that mean for Solo? Big Solo over there. Kevin, by the way, Kevin Owens has a fractured rib. So he can't wrestle. So the advocate once for the bloodline and they've been teasing it the roman turn is coming why not have this happen and take place at summer i'd rather see paul i'd rather see paul Heyman manage a revamped version of the hurt business street profits heel <laughs> bobby lashley and bianca belair oh fuck you oh you made it better Oh, that would be. I kind of want MVP there. That's just me. Yeah, because he initially did start it, and maybe just use almost as their enforcer. 
Fuck you, we're Ray. Not, we're, not, we're, not, we're not even wrestling, really, because we nobody really want to. But he could still bring that presence to the point where it's like, all right, I got all their backs type thing, where he's always lurking. Because mm-hmm. dude, ain't, he ain't trash as bad as he, we thought he might be. Jeez. I will say this. I just don't need him wrestling more than like five minutes. Jeez, are y'all good? What are y'all on right now? Y'all just took over like a whole different turn of my universe right now. Because I'm telling you, a lot of to do. Now that's why when I when we said let's bring it back a couple weeks when 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 King with the Black Robe said that Judgment Day was the new DX. That's why I couldn't crown him that because a while China kind of was in that role, China was never the definitive leader. Ooh. You know what I'm saying? Rhea is the definitive leader of that faction. I, you know, we wanted to say it was Finn. We some may even want to say it's is is Damian Priest. It's real, mm-hmm. but you make Rhea the dominant face of the of her division. Paul can walk around with both of her titles. Where they messed up with the bloodline with Solo. Solo had won the North American Championship. They made him give it back. Solo could have been their presence on NXT. Now we got Judgment Day on, on Raw. The only way you bring that, now I don't know how you do that. How you bring them to coming and, and being on both Raw and SmackDown, getting them tag titles, because those have been their main Achilles heel on Raw. Sami Zayn and KO. I want to I want to interject real quick. Okay. Let's just go with the narrative that Jey Uso wins the championship. <coughs> what if Paul Heyman just becomes an advocate for Solo? Solo goes back and gets the North America championship from there from a title that he never lost. Honestly, at this point, because then you would be pitting Solo against Dom, and I don't know if you want to put Dirty Dom and Solo against each other. They're two good heels. They're getting good heat, uh, both of them. My whole thing is visibility. If anything... <laughs> I would make if he was going to be Solo's advocate, make him go after Carmelo Hayes. Oh, shut up! Take my money. You're a fucking asshole. That's great. Yeah, yeah. If I see, if I see, I don't know. After the blood over, I think Paul might disappear for a little bit. I could see him coming back and being Austin Theory's advocate. <laughs> that probably will happen because he needs it. He he fucking needs it. He fucking needs it. he fucking needs it. Yeah. Cause you know they invested in him, but he's just not there yet. You mean prototype 2.0? Come on, Crush Daddy. I know you got something. Wait, wait, Come on. This will be my last part. This will be my last part. And I'll let Will talk. What if? And hear me out. Somebody's career is winding down. Although he was kicked out, what if Edge is their advocate, and he just don't wrestle no more for Judgment Day? I wouldn't be mad at that. I wouldn't be mad at that either. That makes sense. I just think, and I ain't just saying it because it's my hot take, but. No, I'm not saying there's no possibility. I just think it's just the way that group is. It, 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 this is off to me. That would be awesome. Yeah. That would be awesome. Damn, just, that was, damn, that was good. It brings it all back full circle. If Eric right. comes and helps Finn successfully beat Steph, who he did feud with, right? Mm-hmm. And he did feud with Roman. And he helps Damian Priest get the strap off of Roman. Two people he disliked. And it, that that story's there too. That's so, it's so many things. No judgment day is Edge, Damian Priest, and Rhea Ripley. It made sense for him to back them where it's successful. Rhea got the belt she got. Damian got the opportunity. If it was ever a time for Edge to take back control of Judgment Day. It should be soon. I also think, in a quick hot take to this point, but as it happened, Finn got to go. Yeah, it's time. It's time. Um, and and not to and not to be a jerk about it. His promo was good. People are just being assholes now. So Finn is now the guy. Finn, Finn, Finn is now, if not the same level as Dom in terms of wanting to be booed or just not listened to anymore. And it's time for Finn to get to a space where he's not dressing like a pirate no more and go back to being a prince. <laughs> I'm just, it's, it's just, bro, it's, it's, it's got to be a time where we, we got to go back to like, okay, Finn, it's not working with you in there. It's just not. That's the only thing that's a little off 
is Finn. Edge fits perfectly. Finn is a little off. The they, thing, go, ahead, the, go ahead. I'm sorry. The thing of it is, is and we'll talk about it next week because SummerSlam is a couple weeks away. Um, it, it's too SummerSlam is so complicated right now that you really don't have an answer to what's going to happen with what, and that's what's making this so exciting because you have so many things like that triple threat match with Oscar, Charlotte, and Bianca has ramifications that are huge because you've already seen Bobby Lashley with Trip and Mello, Street Profits. It's a matter of time if Bianca Belair loses. You don't think you're going to see Bobby Lashley with Bianca Belair? Wait a minute, though. I'll go back one last thing about Judgment Day, I promise. I said what if Damian Priest cashed in on Carmelo. Actually, didn't Melo already lose to Finn Balor like twice? So couldn't he technically pop up an NXT and take the title off Melo and maybe Damian Priest cash in on Seth? Yep. The only reason I don't want anybody taking the title, the, the NXT title right now is because I want to see Dragon off with That's it. Not gonna happen. I, I'm just saying that me personally. Not, not saying I'd be against it because I disagree with him going and have and, and, and doing the Prince routine down there again. You know, yeah. I've been saying this whole thing for a couple of weeks now. I really feel like they're trying to build momentum into doing a revitalized black and gold brand of NXT. Where Great. all of these shows are on par. But that's, the, that's the next that's the next part. Yep. That's the next part that I want to talk about. Now, Michael. Picking bottom is cooking. Okay? NXT 2.0. Dead. I don't want to hear anything anybody gotta say anymore. The title is Black and Gold is back. Question, question, question mark. Three of them. You know why? Because I just watched NXT this past week and I was like, oh shit, this ain't what I've been watching or on and off. This shit is now getting good again. Number one, Booker T on commentary is either hit or miss. But this week he was on fire. I'll give him that. He can have that. Number two. Number two. To make a match with Mustafa Ali, Wesley, and Dirty Dom. Interesting is enough. To make the promo that much more interesting is even better. Huh. And look at Wesley trying to come out his shell. He said, hey, bro, you got one more time. I'm going to beat your motherfucking ass, bro. I ain't going to play with you. The women's match might be decent. Tiffany Stratton's pretty nice. Tag match with Gallus, I like them. They're pretty nice. Um, I don't I don't, I don't, don't like uh, the dude that's like not from Chicago, but from Illinois. That bothers me. He annoys me a little bit. Oh, 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 oh. Tony D'Angelo? Yeah, I don't like Tony D'Angelo. He's a fucking annoying guy. But he's, he's a bit he's a bit of a I, he needs to go. But it's interesting. So with Dirty Dime at the hell of the North American Championship, are we going to see a turn of NXT 2.0 turning maybe back into a different version of black and gold version? I say yes. Hmm. I hmm. say yes. Look at the the injection of mid card talent that's been down there that's helping the overall product get over you know prior than what was taking place they did the whole reboot 2.0 and they were putting talent out there that was obviously pretty green and they were nowhere near ready to be on television just yet when they did this rebrand current day you still see some of that taking place but nowhere near as much as it was before why because you got guys like the lone wolf down there you know what i'm saying you got you got people from nxt uk i love gallus i really want to see gallus and the viking raiders go at in a few for the uh, nxt uh, tag titles oh my god i would love to see that right about now um if they go ahead and just unify the and give you we get one title for the tag titles for raw smackdown they finally do that and they just say, hey, you know what? We're going to acknowledge the NXT tag titles, and we're going to acknowledge these titles. These are the two titles that all of the teams can go after. And that's mm-hmm. just the, the division. You know, the te- the people that, you know, Street Profits and all these people. All right, you're not really utilizing them on the main roster. Guess what? 
let's get them back on NXT and run shop down there because you got Gallus down there. You got teams down there that could have, that could benefit from you know having programs with these type of dudes. You know, with Viking Raiders, with um, what's my man name? Uh, was it Angel Garcia and uh, Humberto? Angel Garza. Angel Garza. You know what I'm saying? Like these are teams that could really be something. Give them the time and in the in the uh, energy. And for God's sakes. Please put Karrion Cross back on NXT. Karrion Cross needs NXT, and NXT needs Karrion Cross. And we need bald head Karrion Cross. I don't need Karrion Cross with his hair. Okay, he he, he he came back. He kept the hair, and it's it's not working. We saw Karrion Cross in person. He's a hulking dude. This dude is huge. But you need to, you got to have that psychopath look, Karrion Cross. No, he got to cut that. He got to cut that. Here has to go. Just my feelings hurt. Just look. That's my two cents, though. Look, man. Look, man. I didn't. I'm going to break it down for you guys like this. The last two or three weeks, NXT's been fired. So if you're telling me right now that Paul and Michael ain't working together on this shit, you're tripping. You're tweaking. He calling up. He calling up Paul like, hey, yo. Real quick question. Um, can we, is that cool? I'm going to switch it up like this. Gonna, bro, they cooking. They cooking. Don't forget they, Road Dog. They, Brian, they, Brian James is in that mix. Brian James in there too. In that mix. He, they, 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 all, they got they got, they got, got the science to this shit. And it's, it's really starting to work out in a, in a fashion that's very much so beneficial for both brands. Because if I'm being honest, if you integrate all three brands now together, making the show deeper and more interesting or whatever, there, there's no one overtaking any of you. You can't compete with that. The roster is so vast now where everyone gets a shine. Dana Brooke had a decent match this past Tuesday. Just want to put it out there again. Dana Brooke had a decent match this past Tuesday. One more time for the people in the back. Break. I don't, I don't know if you guys know. Dana Brooke had a decent match this past Tuesday. You say it three times like Beetlejuice and we lose KG. I, 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 <laughs> it's crazy. I, you know, look, excuse look, me. Look, look, man, look, listen. That listen. I I can't make this up, bro. Like he like she's actually had a decent match. The version of NXT 2.0 is on its last lifeline. It is gonna be dead. They're gonna rebrand NXT. And it's going to be something nice because the way that look you got mustafa ali wesley and dirty down in the match the wrestling alone is going to be good but now you make the characters a little bit more complicated because mustafa ali and wesley have this pissing match they got going on back and forth not even realizing dirty dom is the goddamn champion and he hold all the cards this, this is it's, it's so many layers to this shit that people are not understanding right now the NXT is is prime right now. Like it's 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 gonna get back to like Gargano Champa days, okay? Velveteen Dream, Alistair Black days, okay? Five star takeover matches in Brooklyn and shit. Like it's 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 about to get nasty. I strongly suggest you watch Great American Bash. I strongly suggest you do it. Strongly suggest you do it. Sorry, just go ahead, question. I'm sorry, go ahead. No problem. But um, with the whole NXT point we talking about and what we driving on, what NXT is like doing right now, it's like um, similar to like a basketball team rebuild. Good example. Um, let's use like the Lakers for example. Um, the original Black and Gold is like the Kobe and Shaq years, and then 2.0 was whatever the fuck happened after that. <laughs> <laughs> that was that year they were supposed to win, but they didn't. <laughs> nah. nah, I got that ass whipped. Um, <laughs> but like what's happening now with NXT is like <laughs> my bad. 
Now they got their ass with by the Pistons. That's what happened. Shit. Right. I mean, who saw that coming? No one saw that shit coming. You know what? Whoa, Detroit. Um, Detroit. Come on, man. Like this current era of NXT and like what they doing post 2.0 is kind of like um that's more so like when LeBron got to the Lakers. That's what's kind of going on right now. Like it's like a slow rebuild of a team well, of a team that you're gonna always probably see in the playoffs. Or having some kind of success. NXT right now is trying to do stuff with the people in charge and what they kind of like, how they move stuff around, put other people in position of power, people getting pushes. Hell, Brown break a turn heel. Good job. Um, you know, like like y'all been saying, they, they they cooking. And this is the most attention that I think, I personally get NXT in a while. They incorporating people from the main roster who's been getting wasted, put them back at NXT, and they're actually using them. And it don't seem like they're down there just like because they're not being used. Like Ali is in a, a decent rivalry with um, you know Wesley, and now Dominic Mysterio, who is the hottest heel in the uh, WWE, not named Roman Reigns. That's my opinion, and I can back it up. It's true, um, damn true. <laughs> and then we got um, Melo is the champ. Melo's face. People are cheering Trick Williams for God's sakes. I mean, it's crazy. Why did you awesome. do it? Wild. You got people cheering this this black dude with leather red pants on. Um, he <laughs> looked like a Magic Mike stripper. Anyway, uh, but they're cheering him. You know, that made KG come back. Uh, Trick Williams did that. Trick Williams brought him back. Look, man, I hate Trick Williams, but he said uh, Jack City brought me back into this conversation. He is, he is, he is black test. He is, that is spot that, on. That is the most, that is the most accurate statement I've ever heard in my life. Ah. <laughs> RIP the test. But that, that, is is that is the most accurate statement I have ever heard. Because I was watching NXT last night, right? And I'm looking at Melo and him. They had the tag match with Dragon Off, the triple threat match. Uh, and I'm like, all right, I get it. This is supposed to be kind of like Sean Diesel, but right. he's not Diesel. Nope. Like, there's nothing about Trick that's Diesel. Like, nope. I'm not saying he can't eventually get over. I'm not going to say that. Cause he got he got a presence. He got a nice, you know what I'm saying, look to him. Talk. He can talk, but I'm like, he's not Diesel though. Nope. nope. Fucking test. <laughs> That's he's fucking test. He fu- bro, he's fuck. He's fucking. What was test? test? God bless the dead. But what was test? test. He was Diesel or Chase. These he was he was he was, you diesel. he was Diesel with better quads and better knees. Yeah. That- he threw that boot. That's my favorite boot of all he was, time. He was Diesel without the charisma. Yep. Kevin Nash, yeah. big chariz- charismatic MF. Yep. He was Diesel without the. There it is. He was Diesel without the, the charisma. That's how he wore that. He wore, he wore that same shit. Edge wore the leather pants and shit with a little fishnet shirt. He had that big boot, that pump handle slam and shit. He was athletic. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like he, he he's Kevin he's Kevin Nash without the charisma. Holy shit. Yeah. Jace, man. Kevin Harris and had no choice but to be charismatic. He was over there fighting Ninja Turtles in the basement. He did that. He did do that. He did that. Super Shredder. Super Shredder. Super Shredder. Also, speaking of NXT Black and Gold, uh, Gable Stevenson is going to be a part of Alpha Academy. You can just put that money. You can just put that in the bank. You can just, you can just sign that up right now. You can just put him in there right now. It's going to be beautiful. Okay? Like it's, it's Chef's Kiss. Because yeah. everybody, everybody wanted Kurt Angle to come back, and I wouldn't be mad at that. But Chad's on fire. He is. Alpha Academy has visibility there. Again, another team where this tag team division could be super duper solid if they just dedicate, you know, completely to it. You know. But yeah. I say this while we on the subject of. Um... NXT while it is where it is and then Alpha Academy being involved into the conversation about Gable Stevenson with the way they've been kind of moving stuff around 
right now they got the whole feud with um the Viking Raiders right now, right? Mm-hmm. Right. Don't be surprised if when that feud is over that we see them pop up in uh NXT. I agree. Because it, it could happen. All three of them have been there. And it should happen. You know, so they're, they're familiar with NXT, the crowd. And then I think of the role that they're on, like they can go with anybody down there. Anybody. And then if you find a way to incorporate Gable into it, just on like a backstage conversation, just to plant the seeds. And then when the people in charge, they'll plant seeds. Give them a reason. They'll give them a reason. Listen, Chad Gable. Yeah. Ch- Chad, Chad Gable is literally must see TV right now. I agree. If you put Gable Stevenson and and just and just let Chad cook and let him go on a singles run and make uh, Otis and Gable Stevenson a tag team, you, that, that, that's why I'm, it's too much to this shit, bro. They, Sean, Brian, I'm sorry, Michael. Ryan and Paul have figured this shit out. They have they have figured this shit out. Bro, we are on we are on the road to an epic, epic, epic time in wrestling right now, bro. We have you have so many options right now that right now, you listen, if you're single and you like wrestling, you better figure it out. You better date a girl who watch wrestling, because you're gonna be locked in Monday through Friday. Sorry, Saturday through Saturday through motherfucking Friday, locked in. You got Raw on Monday, NXT on Tuesday, uh, Dynamite on Wednesday. What's on Thursday? Nothing's on Thursday. Oh, no. Impact. Impact. Impact's on Thursday, alive. Then you got SmackDown and motherfucking uh, Rampage. Rampage. Rampage on Friday, and then you got on Saturday. And don't let it be a pay per view week. You better hope none of them bitches on the Sunday. You locked in. As a podcast right now, I'm gonna be the first one to say it. I have I have times where I have to catch up. Like I have, like I can't watch wrestling this week. It's just too much going on. I gotta catch up. I gotta watch highlights, top tens, and shit. Okay. Definitely. definitely. Um, if KO is definitely injured, like you said, it's a, it's one of those things where it sucks because it ends possibly. KO and Sammy's reign. But think of all of the legit tag teams that you could have a tournament with right now that could become the new tag champions as a result. Then that also gives you the chance to where if somehow, some way you want to revitalize the Roman Sammy feud, or if you want to do a Sammy Cody feud, or if you want to do a Sammy gunther feud like oh my god or you could utilize sammy in nxt too like the options become endless because now you're using him as a singles competitor again and then when ko returns you'll be utilizing him as a singles competitor again which gives you even more talent that can now go on and have singles matches with these newly anointed possible possible champions you know be it a finn balor be it a damian priest you know, if Roman's still champion over there on SmackDown, I don't know how you get them on SmackDown, but we got Bobby getting ready to come back. So we know Bobby somehow, some way, going to end up against uh, Roman again. You know? Uh, hot take. So, what the, what, what? Y'all remember when the Royal Rumble happened? Right before the Royal Rumble, it was like, Jay and Jimmy were defending the titles and Jimmy got hurt. Mm-hmm. They couldn't defend the titles with Jimmy and Sammy. Okay. Just, just, just follow me. Um, Jay wrestles, Jay wrestles, Jay wrestles, uh, Rome at SummerSlam loses. Okay. And, and nothing happens. And then Monday, uh, Paul's like, hey, Gotta be a tag team championship. Um, Sammy, you gotta give the titles. And then Sammy's sitting right there, and all of a sudden, Jay walks back out to help Sammy defend the title. Because hmm. maybe he figured out Sammy was right all along. 
You know, I'd be Roman, and they'll come back to that you. And then Jimmy feels the type of way. Fucks up for him in the future. And you get Jay and Jimmy at WrestleMania. Like how they won't. Jay versus Stanley. Yeah, I don't Sammy Uso. I don't know how long I don't know how long a fractured rib takes though. But they say he was wrestling with it already, so I'm assuming they might not take the titles off them. Because yeah. they have enough content. They have enough content. But if they don't want to take the titles off them yet, they could wait. And you have a I don't think they announced the tag title match for SummerSlam yet either. No, because because originally it's probably gonna be like a period at some point because they're, they're on the road for that with like you know some, some stuff and just some things. But I mean, if I'm being honest with you, they've shown Sammy and KO in such a good light. They don't need to really have a tag team match. It would just be nice if they had one. You know what I'm saying? Like, they don't need to have one, but it'd be nice to have one. Um, let's get to these picks, bro. Let's get to these picks. We got four picks. All right. Uh, Wait, let's do the picks. What's going on with New Day? New Day been off TV for a while. Is somebody injured or Kofi injured? Kofi injured. Okay. Kofi's injured. Biggie's still injured. Austin Creed is making money off YouTube. So, yeah, it is. There's no need for it. Because when y'all were talking about the whole tag tournament thing. First thing I thought, all right, this is a good chance to go ahead and get New Day one more title run. Right, right. That's why I asked, because I'm like, yo, they've been out TV for a minute. So. And it'd be perfect to bring them back and they get it a few months and Big E come back. But they all messed up right now. Yeah, Big E got like six, seven more, six, six, six to eight months left. He will be probably back. Six Kobe got. Left? Yeah, it's a neck injury, bro. Like it's a neck, like it's a. Yeah, it was bad. Yeah, they, they said he making good progress, like great progress. But, which by the way, this this last thing that happened with Ridge Holland, he just need more training, bro. Because the dude that fell was off a shoulder tackle, and he landed from like he he landed awkwardly. He landed awkwardly. Like it was, it, it's not all on Ridge Holland. It's something that has to do with it. Maybe I don't know. I don't wrestle. But it didn't look like Ridge Holland did all. Like it wasn't like he did with John Gargano and Biggie, where he was in control of the actual shit, and then he dropped the motherfucker on the head. No. So no Biggie, right back. We, we not we not revoting. No, I'm not gonna ride back him yet. Okay. Because Big E skipped like a rock in, in, in the fucking pond. It, it, it's not the same thing. All right. Great American Bash picks. Number one, metaphor with Noam Dar, Ordo Menace, Takara Jackson and Lash Legends versus Nathan Frazier, Dragon Lee, Ulyssa Leon, and Valentina. What eyes? Mixed tag team match. Who you got? The team Dragon Lee is on. I was just about to say the same thing. As much as I want to say that team, I'm going to say Norman's Norman team. The Dragon Lee is a bad oh. motherfucker. Mm. That's the name, right? Norman Dar. No Norman Dar. Dar. No Norman Dar. Yeah, Norman Dar. Yeah. Dragon Lee is a bad motherfucker, man. Yeah, man. That's a bad. You, you, he got to get a push, bro. In some shape, he. That's a bad motherfucker, man. Don't Kachita him. Yeah, don't do that shit. Don't fuck his shit up, bro. Let him be who he is and find a way to utilize him correctly. Get him a mouthpiece, he'll be fine, bro. He's good. Uh, Gable Stevenson versus Barry Corbin. Gable Stevenson. Yeah, they're not going to make him lose his first one, Gable. You ponder it, something. He's swerving over there. You, you, you ponder it, so. <laughs> Man. You ponder it, so. I, I, I feel like they'll go ahead and let him put him over. Yeah, Gable, Gable will get it. Gable will get it. Y'all just write, remember, man. If we see the end of days, this is a messed up day. He ain't getting out. Or, no, that's not right. I don't know shit. But then, it's the Great American Bash, right? If well, the yeah. Alpha Academy thing do happen then. Hmm. It's the Great American Bash. Hmm. It's a great American match. Hmm. Um, Dominic Mysterio, Mysterio versus Mustafa Ali versus Wesley. Dirty Dom. Nick. Dirty Dom. He's on fire right now. KG, who you got? Dom. Okay. All right. All right. Dirty Dom, you dirty dog, stealing people's girlfriends. Wesley. He's a, it's calm. He's a thief. First off. Yo, first off, let's get something straight right now, bro. 
that wasn't Dom that stole his girlfriend. Buddy Murphy lost his girl. That's what that is. That's that's not the same. Buddy's not that's just a, fair well, every week, man. Well, at the same at the same time, they said he kissed on the forehead. I mean, yeah, it wasn't in real wasn't. life, right? It ain't like they was kissing. They didn't make they out were. on TV, bro. It was a kiss on the forehead. Like, okay, listen, look, listen. Let 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 me let me explain something to you. Plus, Don got a whole girl in here for like years, bro. Right. I don't follow my IG. That's what I'm saying. I don't even know. If, I think they just stirring the pot. I mean, it, I'm not saying it's not happening, and it won't happen. What I'm saying, as of now, last time I checked, he had like a whole situation for like. Yeah, uh, he had like a whole girl. Like, since he's been like a teenager. But, and I'm gonna say, but, and I know my main man Clutch Daddy over there can feel me. Sometimes you have a main squeeze, and you get a little something on the side too. Hey, uh, oh, but I, I, I was about to say no Sammy Guevara situation. And no. big, mommy, big mommy on the side ain't a bad side. Yeah, look, but listen, first off, first off, big mommy on the side never gonna be a side. You already know what that is. Listen, dirty. Dom, on, uh... Dom, Dom had Dom, Dom had her thigh on his shoulder, and and the first his first yeah. thought, was, I love my girlfriend. I love my girlfriend. I love my girlfriend. I love my girlfriend. That all he want. I want y'all to know that it's real ironic that all this is going on when about two, maybe even three years ago. Uh, Buddy Murphy had a whole program with his sister, and and on camera, and Mr. Murphy's contract is up in a couple years. And they and someone was saying that it could be a storyline with nothing. Yep. Nope. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Yeah, he still got about two two piece. I think they say TK over there doing a three year contract. Three know. years. You got to do three years over there. Got to do three years. Um, Blair Davenport versus Roxanne Perez. With their weapons, wild match. And for the record, Roxanne Perez is young. She's 20. So I think that we should really talk about taking that WCW down because she was young then. No. Why would we take that down? Because she because she she wasn't even an age then. I think I don't what how old is Roxanne Perez? She's 20 or 20. Is she 20? Seriously? It wasn't like she was underage, so. But I don't feel comfortable. How long ago was that, though? Like a year ago. It was like a year ago. So she was 19. Because she was the youngest uh, Ring of Honor champion. She's 21. Okay. So she was 19 when she was uh, our WCW. Okay. Okay. Just leave it alone, Joe. Leave it alone. Boom, right along. Uh, picks, y'all. Who y'all get? Yeah, that threw me off. Who was her uh, opponent? <laughs> Blair, Blair uh, Davenport. Yeah, it's a winner. I'm with yeah, I'm Plus Daddy. I'm going with I'm, yeah, She just fought Rhea Ripley. Stop playing. No, yeah. uh, that was uh, Valkyrie that fought. Lyric, Lyric, Lyric Valkyrie. Oh, right. I would say Blair just because they just set the title of Roxanne a few months ago, so I don't if they – I guess this would be like the second tier for you right now that's going. So mm-hmm. if she wins if she wins that, then she's back in the title picture. Not that there's anything wrong with that. I just don't know if they're gonna put her back in the title picture. Um at this point, Roxanne Perez is must see TV. She good. Like she's good. Yeah. Yeah, she's gonna take the time regardless. But yeah, Blair is somebody that they're obviously invested in. And she she's she would be good, you know, in the in that title picture as well. So yes. All right, Gallus versus the D'Angelo family, Tony D'Angelo and Stax. Oh man, please, Gallus, Gallus, just because I just I don't know what the yes, hell. Please, Gallus. How much I don't know. I can't stand Tony D'Angelo. Bro. That that character just no. This isn't the nineties. I'm sorry. WWE. I see what you, I see what you did there because remember the full blooded Italians at ECW. That's what they're trying to do. That, yeah, and I get it, but it ain't clicking. I like it, Lil Guido. Like, like Lil Guido. WCW failed. WWE failed. Let it go. Let it go. It's not gonna work. Um, Tiffany Stratton versus Thea Hale in a submission match for the women's championship. Number one, uh, Thea Hale is very underrated. This some research on her. Yeah, girl, congrats. Uh, Tiffany Stratton, I'm going to be the first one to say it. I didn't think she was going to be shit. <laughs> Just a pretty face, huh? I'll, I'll say it. I was wrong. 
that she can go. I, I was like, Tiffany Stratton is Tiffany Stratton is built like Charlotte and boring. I don't want to watch this shit. But she got personality. She's a bit of a jackass, and she, she's she's like she's she's Charlotte with the personality, but not as athletic. So yeah, Charlotte with the personality. Let's let's think there for a second. Cause I, I I think I I think I'm agreeing. I think I'm agreeing. I don't know if she's as athletic as Charlotte. Someone said she's better than Charlotte. Kate the Great, she's better than Charlotte to you. Whoa, that's a hot take for you. That's a hot take. That's a hot take. Damn. Mm. That's a hot take. Okay, okay, Kate, I see you. I see you. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. Sure. I appreciate uh, it. Let's, let's think on that, though, man. Mm-hmm. Look, man, look, listen, look. I, I'm telling, listen, listen. She did a whole promo bringing the whole roster out, telling her to thank them for her winning the title. And when she thinks about giving them a chance, she'll let them know and said, okay, bye, and walk out. <laughs> 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 I was like, oh, what is it? Uh, I think they're going to take the title off of her yet. No. But Thea gives me Daniel Bryan vibes on the female tip. And she is talented in that ring. And I think she'll have her chance eventually, but it probably won't be Great American Bash. So it's, I think definitely. It's to build her up. She's a part of Chase U. She's goaded forever. Yeah. She's part of Chase U. Goaded forever. Who you got, uh, KG? Uh, I'll, I'll take uh, Tiffany Stratton too. It will. It will. Tiffany Stratton. Now oh. I think I'm off yet. All right, here we go. Mellow versus Dragon off. Ah. Mellow don't. Mellow don't miss. Come on, fellas. I want Dragon off, man. I'm sorry. It's just like Dragon right. off. Dragon off is hot, man. Like. In my mind, I kind of wonder what those two losses to Finn did for Mello going to a match like this. Like, mm. what if Finn coughs Mello time? Okay, I'm I'm sticking my original prediction. Mello wins. Damian Priest cash in. I'm gonna go with Dragon Off, man. I'm gonna. Go. I'm gonna go. I, I want to say something here. And when I say it, I'm only saying it because I am toxic. They're not going to let Dragunov win the title. Because the last time he won an NXT UK title, there you go. Finish the rest of it. There's no more NXT UK. It's gone. Nothing exists. He had a five star match with uh, Balter at the time. He did. Can you sell Dragonov as NXT champion? Can you sell him? Can you make money off of him to a regular fan of wrestling? With that, I say, when we first got introduced to Walter, did we? Was that appealing to us? Nope. To Joe, it was Joe knew him on the Indies? Indies, Indies, baby. Hey, bro, Indies, baby. Hey. I love Walter. I love Walter. Okay, first, first I'm, I'm not saying us. I mean, we we just a smidge different. We do a show here, so our level of fandom is different from the casual fan. Yeah, but big men make money. Walter's like a legit six four, six five. So that you could just sell that off, just simply off that. Walter, Duck, to me at least, doesn't have the Brock Lesnar presence. Oh no, he was out of shape and everything to a degree. That's what like, I'm saying. like I'm not saying current day Walter. I'm just saying that Walter. No, I'll right? say any, I'll say even then though, because big men make money in wrestling, man. Yeah. Look, I mean, I mean, look at Big Van Vader. Wrestling saw that's probably the greatest big man ever. He was never in shape. I agree. Vader have been flipping around like that, and he wasn't in shape. Say a lot. I I, I, th- I think his his version. I like no, the version. Yeah. I just don't know who makes money. What I'm saying because. One of the one of the main eventers of WrestleMania, another athletic big man, but he wasn't in shape. Rest his soul too. Bam, bam. And and Dragon and and Dragon off looks like a conquistador. Like he looks like he can sort of fight. Oh, no, Dragon off. Yeah. 
Oh, it's not true. Look at his yeah. mustache, bro. He looks like a three musketeer. Yeah, yeah I, don't know, I don't know what's up the mustache, but they did catch me off guard because I didn't see him in a minute. But he, I will give him this. He does look the part, though. Like, even though he's undersized, he is cut like rock. He's like three amigos. That's what I'm not being this I'm not being this The dragon, I will kick my ass, but you, you, you totally will kick your ass. You know for a fact, you see Dragon Off, you say, you, you, you say, all for one and one for all. Huh. Like you see it, you don't lie to me. Don't lie to me and say you don't see it, okay? Don't lie to me and say you don't see it. You fucking lie to me. Look, look, man, it's what's going to print money. Listen. But you saying that, like, I mean, Melo, his presentation is different, but he ain't too much bigger than him, so what are you saying? But, bro, it's, but, but. But you can print money with Mello. Mello is a cool. Mello is actually an articulate African American champion that doesn't say anything like "yo" or "steal" or "come from the hood" or none of that other shit. He can actually talk on the mic. He's actually appealing to. You got to remember who your audience is. And he makes money. Just them facts. I don't. I don't make the rules here, baby. This is what it is. <laughs> this is what it is. I'm just saying, bro, and, and I'm not, and I'm not, and again, I'm not saying this because I don't believe in Dragunov as a wrestler. I think Dragunov as a wrestler is fucking amazing. You, you're going to get a match. Where the shit that he did with fucking Braun Breaker, chef's kiss. I watched that match over and over again. Braun, Braun Breaker actually looked really fucking, Braun Breaker was doing shit I ain't seen him do ever. Because Dragon that last man, That last man standing with Dijak? Yep. Yep. Bro, bro Dragon Off don't listen to Ring. I'm not saying it's going to be a terrible match. I'm saying that if we're really being honest with ourselves, there is no way that Dragon Off can win this. Like, he can't be champion for this brand right now unless you make him, you know, champion for a little while and then switch up and get narrative. For as much as I understand the narrative and the logic in what y'all are saying, I don't I he could be rewarded for the stuff he's been through in some of the matches he has won in the past to this point. We've seen more unlikely people be champion in NXT and in other places. You want an example? Jinder Mahal. Let's go. Oh, you're an asshole for that one. You didn't have to do that. You're a dick. Hey Great says definitely has skills, but she doesn't think he's winning either. Bro, bro, mm. listen, look. Listen, bro, look. Tommaso Ciampa comes to mind too as somebody that that randomly won and they made it work. But Tommaso champion champion uh, Tommaso Champa's yeah. character made him that when he turned heel, he had no theme music and was booed the whole time he came out there. He had fingers with Johnny Gargano, and he didn't even need to say anything. It just made sense. I've never, I've never once heard any of us talk about Jack Young promo ever. Yeah, I'm about to say, Tommaso Ciampa is like one of the top five talkers in NXT history. Yes, he can talk. I'm trying to think somebody who's a better talker than him. Maybe KO when he was down there. Adam Cole. No, oh, yeah, right, Adam. I don't know why I Adam. It's, it's it's all in there. It's a small amount. Look, dragging off in that ring. And, then, and Sammy. That's Sammy. about it. It's those. Who are the top five? What was the topic? Probably. See? Mm -hmm. What what you're saying, it kind of is giving me Chris Benoit vibes. You know, I know his name's the boogeyman, and a lot of people don't want to bring up Chris Benoit, but you're saying about Dragunov, yeah, they kind of said the same thing about him. She said, Kate says some of the good promos in NXT as well, which he actually did. I'm not, I'm going to get that. He did do good promos in there as well. I agree. Kate, you're on fire right now. I appreciate you so much. First off, first off let's 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 get let's let's nip this in the bud right now. Let's nip this in the bud right now. Okay. Dragon off was NXT UK champion after having a bang revolt. Okay. They knew it wasn't gonna happen in terms of NXT UK because of COVID and because of the pandemic. That makes sense. Now, they are literally two or three weeks worth of good ass shows. They're on fire. They're not missing. They're swinging and they're knocking everything out. They're getting whatever they want. If you make Dragon off your champion, what happens to Melo? He gets his rematch, 
or or he debuts on SmackDown, a part of Bobby Lashley's new faction. Yeah, it is. Okay, okay so what happens to Trick? Fuck Trick. Trick will probably be the same. <laughs> Big Trick. Let, let, let him get lost like how Shotzi lost Ember Moon. Oh, that's fucked up. Stings the nostrils. Stings the nostrils. Stings the nostrils. They'll start out on NXT, man, and they'll develop them further. I mean, right, bro, but listen, bro, but this is this is what I'm saying. He could be a new primetime player. Okay, bro. All right, we're done here. No, we're not. I'm not letting you. <laughs> I'm not letting you ride with you. That's fucked up. That's fucked up. Hey, bro. Uh, thanks for how. Is, thanks- is, is it one more match? Does no, it? Don't no, know? no, you fucked it up. Don't bring Follow- it up. <laughs> <laughs> it was a high tech wrestling <laughs> Instagram and TikTok. Twitter at Wrestling Take, YouTube at NMG TV, where you know this episode will be edited. I, the, the new uh, prime time place is fucked up. These are the contributors to the Hot Take Wrestling Podcast, y'all. We appreciate y'all watching. Appreciate y'all sticking around with us, hanging out with us. The new that's fucked up. That's <laughs> what? Fucked up. You said what could happen to him? I gave you a good damn example. trick. The trick at least deserves better than the prime time fucking players. Okay, the Jesus. No, 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 no. Think about it. The prime time players. Once they took their mouthpiece away from them, that's when it was just downhill from there. Once dude said the little Kobe in uh, Ohio, or no, what was it? Kobe in Colorado, that, that little line, and they took him off of TV, fired him. That's oh, when yeah. it lost the luster. Listen, bro. Listen, look, I'm going to be honest with you. Only person I like in that fucking group, Tyus O'Neill, anyway, I still got them bad vibes from. You ain't from- like Darren Young? No, because Darren Young showed up uh, part of NXT with that weird ass haircut. He's like a bad version of Goku. I don't like Darren Young. He was Goku Cena. Then he was just Black Cena. Then right. He- it was weird, bro. It was weird. It was, you know. Then they repackaged him, and then they made it made it public that he was uh, gay or whatever. And we were like, we didn't need to then know they that. Him, then they then they put him with Bob Backlund. Yeah. yeah. They put him with Bob Backlund, the most the most Republican wrestler in the history of history. Then Bob Backlund went for president. Did he? Yeah. Well, he lost, he lost pretty bad, but he tried. He tried, but he lost. Like he he, he didn't he didn't make it past the primaries, but he tried. Shot Vince hey, tried to they, they could put Trick Williams with Apollo. There you go, right there. Hey, stop! Hey, oh. all right. Hey, guys. Nope. I hey, remember it. remember what happened? Remember what happened, what happened to uh, Apollo? Random. <laughs> His random. <laughs> what was dude? He's he down there. He, he down Aziz Commander, the commander. My fault. Yeah. That was his name. NXT. NXT. He decent. He do decent. Oh, I'm just shaking my head at the whole. He got an accent out of nowhere. After he came up, he was like the reverse Kofi. That's why I'm shaking my head at. Think about that. Wow. That's. An accurate statement, and I'm angry that you said. And that. it makes zero sense. So yeah. we have people watching this podcast right and now. Went back, did. went back to his regular voice. Yeah, he went back to his regular voice too. He just so he like, he like he's like Michael Jackson when he went black to white. He had reverse the Lago, so he had like reverse. Never mind. Give me your catchphrases, guys. Yeah, you didn't even think about reverse the Lago. You know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, before I let you go, see what I did there? We the ones! Hey, I hate you for this Black Street thing. You know they the smoke, baby. Yeah, this Black Street thing is insane. This is crazy. <laughs> this is a crazy narrative right now. Thankful and blessed for everybody who was here to listen to us talk our shit. Excuse my language. But I was here to drop these clutch vibes. Let them know what's up. Uh, if I was in charge of hiring people, if I'm WWE, I'm bringing back Diamond Dallas Page so him and Matt Riddle can form Bang Bros. Okay, bro. <laughs> bro. Oh. Bang. Bro. Dot <laughs> com. I'm just gonna end it there. There's no point in me saying anything. That's the end of the broadcast. That's it.